splendor, power. You know, you own such beauty, hold it out as it were, to give it a place to live. One moment standing there with the great pumping kerosene holes in your hand, and darkness. Then, the merest match, the smallest flint, and glory. Answers to everything. Solutions. Waste done away with. Problems solved. Worries eliminated. We are born of fire. The sun. We go back to it for ends. Between, there's me. The house I work in, the fire I live in, the great warm beauty I share with the world. Free. And everything answered. Everything simple as smoke. <laughs> Kerosene. <laughs> now, isn't that a kind of perfume? <laughs> Don't they have water in your house? 
Ever tried it? Why should I? Because it tastes better. Come on. Oh, I feel silly. If you never feel silly, then you'll never feel great. What am I standing here? Because you know I'm right. Come on. <laughs> You're afraid of drowning. No! <laughs> <laughs> It's water! <laughs> no, no, it tastes just exactly like, well, like, um, Wine? Hey, yes. Next good storm, can I come over to your house and ask you to come out to play? Oh, my wife would not. No, she never does anything. And you've been watching me. Too bad, she never comes out by day. And you should be out by night. Look that way, and that, the sidewalks. Yes, empty. No one uses them anymore. Is it against the law? Not quite. Anyways, I'm not alone. You've been walking home from work for a week now. Have I? Hadn't you noticed? Uh, Come along, you catch your death at cold. No, no, nothing that simple. I've been thinking, I'll just disappear someday and never come back. Why would you say that? I talk too much. My grandfather, Sarah Faber, you ever hear of him? The philosopher <laughs> says I should shut up. I make people nervous. Oh, you make me very nervous. <laughs> See? <laughs> How long have you been a fireman? Oh, years and years. Have you ever read any of the books you burned? That's against the law. Yes, but do you? Don't you know the rules? Monday, burn Malay. Tuesday, Tolstoy. Wednesday, Walt Whitman. Thursday, Thoreau. Friday, Faulkner. Burn them to ashes. Then burn you sound awfully pleased about it. Ah, it's a job. I can see that. Is it true that firemen once put out fires instead of starting them? No. Well, once upon a time, houses did burn, didn't they? They weren't fireproof, like today. A long time ago. There are a few of those houses left. A few, yes, yes. All our houses went on. If it caught fire, <clears throat> would you come over and save me and put it out? I... <laughs> would you? <laughs> I, I don't know. I never thought. Well, here's my house. Remember it, just in case. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you keep changing the subject. Why not? I wonder if those drivers who have grasses, a green blur, flowers, a pink blur, houses are white blurs, brown blurs are cows. I often think that if fast cars had been invented in 1820, Impressionism would have arrived 40 years earlier on. Don't you think? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you must. You're missing all the fun. Did you know billboards on the highways were only 25 feet wide? But with jet cars rushing faster, they had to build our modern ones, stretch them out, make them 100 feet across, just so you could see them. I know! You say I know, and you mean, oh, no, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just, boy, you, what a peculiar beast. <sighs> I like you. <laughs> oh, my, your house. What? Oh, all the lights are on, all, all of them, blazing. That's because we don't have any television walls in our house. Lights on, my father, my grandfather, and me. Talking, talking. Talking? Talking about what? You. <laughs> hey, wait! Yes. Nothing. Oh, one last question. Yes? Are you happy? Huh? I'm sorry. Good night.
Lily? When did we meet? I'm trying to remember. Do, do you know?
upset? The Mildred drama. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Mildred, Mildred, there are 10,000 Mildreds in this city. They call them all. What? That's not true. Well, some maybe. They do a different play each day. One day they'll talk to Mary, the next Helen and leave airspace integrals for Mary all 10,000 of her and Helen all 40,000 of her to make up a line, talk back. You will ruin everything, won't you? <laughs> I've always wanted to be an actress. Well, here's my chance, and who cares if there are a million other Mildreds out there? I'm the one that counts, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there is time! And here it is, the Mildred Show! Things we're going to listen to. 
funny. He's the only person I know who doesn't think I talk enough. He says I'm a regular onion. Onion? Probably because I keep him peeling away the layers. He wants to know why I night walk, watch things, collect leaves. I'll show you my collection someday. Oh, that would be great. He wants to know what I do with all my time. Sometimes I tell him I just sit and think. But I won't tell him what. I've got him running. You think I'm peculiar? Peculiar? <laughs> Aggravating. <laughs> well, you're pretty peculiar yourself, Mr. Montauk. Now, may I ask you one more question? Go ahead. How did it happen? How did you think to take the job you have? You're not like the others. I know. I've seen a few. When I talk, you look at me. The others walk off and leave me talking. Or else threaten me. You're one of the few who actually put up with me. That's why I think it's so strange. You, being a fireman. Hmm. Well, my grandfather and father were firemen. In my sleep, I ran after them. <laughs> That's you! Run! Me too! the smells of 9,500 guilt-ridden men on the run. How do you do go on? Notice the feet. Eight of them. Eight for speed, balance, mobility. The damn thing can run faster than any man, any car. And the mouth. Oh, dear me. Black, do come see the mouth. In that mouth <coughs> of tongue that is a hollow tube, a sharp needle that stings and injects Novocaine procaine into the legs of its prey. <laughs> Why not some sort of gun? Oh, that's no fun. Too quick, too banal, eh, Montauk? And Black, listen to this. <laughs> Splendid, yes? Criminy, who thought of that thing? I did. When I was a boy, I invented a monster on a moor. I named it the Midnight Beast, and then the Hound of the Baskervilles. It ranged my nightmares night on night when I was ten and cold in bed and loved the dark. Hound, I'd say, come get me. And the hound would come. Oh, <laughs> wasn't there a book once with that name? Did you read it? Er, no. Then the book never existed, did it? <laughs> right. <laughs> when will that thing be ready to run? Tomorrow. To be announced on the 9 a.m. news. Great stuff, eh, Montauk? But it's <coughs> famous yet, eh? <laughs> First 
Alarm, A1 Alarm, 790 Grinnell Street. Flammable residence, name Hudson. Hudson Alice. Hudson Alice. I'm a devil, Chuck. Mocha. He runs in beauty like the night, eh? Like the night. Master 
with me. That. A man named Nicholas. A man named Latimer said that to a man named Nicholas Ridley as they were being burnt alive at Oxford for heresy on October 16, 1555. Aren't I full of things? <laughs> Sometimes surprise myself. Come on, let's go. Her house is still burning and will all night. She's dead, forget her. Mota, her book. Book? Did you toss it back to burn? Yeah. Well then, jump. Bright red apple, 
waiting, and a glass of pure cold milk. And you know I'm down there somewhere, waiting, and you come down. Could you believe that? I don't know. Why? I say so. So you must. Well, I really do have to go. Goodbye. Grace, Grace. Reporting sick. 
Yes, we already have that oh. data. How could you? Oh, just can that? She baby's on his way to see you now. Oh, he's coming here? <coughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, it, time for the news. Oh, oh, must watch. Very important. Latest invention will be tested in the next week. All goes well. Functioning full time by year's end. Electrical, computerized searcher. Fast running. For now, it's called only the Hound. Conceived at Montpelier Fire Station. The Hound, combination of... Isn't that beautiful? No. What is it? It's me, coming after me. I built the Hound to hunt myself. You? All that work. The plans, the blueprints. For what? So you could come and get me? That's what you said, wasn't it? No, well, I was just... Joking? Yes, but the best jokes are real. Well, at least they don't have to send someone to fetch old Montauk. Montauk is now both beast and prey. Last, last night, when I was at the station, I was thinking to myself, what if I inserted my own genetic imprint computer card into the hound's muzzle? Here, boy. Here's your victim. Run! Kill! Better, boy. <laughs> that! <laughs> Milk! Sick! No. I was just... No pills! No music! No early to bed at 8 o'clock! There's a thing called listening, Mildred. So listen! It's him! I know!
Then I got well and have stayed well since. Burning was my answer. What a revelation that was. Reborn. Better than a Christian. <laughs> but you had to get sick first in order to get better? Yes. Yes. And what made me sick? I knew too much. The more ideas I crammed in my head, the more confusion. Nothing added up. I knew that once, oh yes, once, once upon a time, there were few people in the world who could read and few books to be had. Then what happened? More people, more books, and the more people you have, the simpler books must become, right? You gain in quantity, but you lose in quality. Yes? I never thought. Don't even try. Let me think for you. <laughs> if you have only a few readers in the world, books can afford to be individual, different, eh? But cram the world with overpopulations, and how can you possibly write individual books for each, eh? No, it can't be. So you write a few books for all. That's what you do. On top of which, you leave the cart and horse of the 19th century and jump pell-mell into and out of elevators, airships, trains, cars, jets, A, eh? jump, push, run, shove. I'm late, I'm late for a most important day. You cry white rabbiting along, eh? Eh? I'm a bit foggy on history. Let me cut the ball. <laughs> jump, push, run, jump. No time. Rush hour all day. Rush dreams by night. No time to read. No time to even live. Run, run. What happens next? Uh, books become short? Bullseye! Bravo! Condense everything. Cut everything. Make midgets of giants. Make pissfire ants of midgets. Make mountains into molehills. Condensations, digests, tabloids. Everything boiled down to the gag, the snap ending. Classics cut to 15-minute radio explosions. Cut again to fit a two-minute book call. Speed up the film. Shorten the news. Give us magazines like Click, Pick, Look, I, Now, Flick, Swift, Pace, Up, Down, In, Out, Bang, Smack, Wallet, Boom! Politics? One sentence. Hell no. A headline. Never mind the story. Give us the pow! Spin the centrifuge! Fling off the thought! And in midair, mankind's thought vanishes up his own backside! <laughs> Shorten school, drop discipline, kill Latin, poison English, give hemlock to philosophy, damn grammar, forget spelling, destroy all buttons, <laughs> replace with zippers. You don't want a man standing around at dawn buttoning himself with time to think, do you? No. No. So empty the theaters. Shut the cinemas. Don't want folks talking to each other on the way out of plays, films, do you? Do you? No. No. So glass wall the homes. TV the walls. Don't be sound the ceilings. <laughs> Keep folks apart. Kill heaven. What next? I like baseball, Montag? Yes. Football? Yes. Uh, basketball? Yes. Ice hockey? Yes. Uh, high life. You must look into that. <laughs> Rugby, handball, tennis. Yes, yes. Good, excellent, fine. More of that, more of those. Zip, bam, whip, run, jump, lots of action, plenty of scores. Good to show. More sports for everyone, eh? Group spirit, fun, eh? Organized and super organized. Super, super sports, so you talk all the time. But all the talk is scores, nice, safe stuff. Scores for basketball, scores for baseball, football, tennis, scores, scores. No substance, no politics, no philosophy, not a shred of a bulldog or tomcat idea, eh? Let's have none of that. Let's not let any oxygen get to the brain, eh? Sell more cars, move the people. Hail to the gasoline nomads and move in rivers across the night and rush. Don't slow. Run across country on roads so fast, you never see land or farm or people, eh? Just <coughs> run and keep your radio high. Blast your mind. Bang your ears. So you don't have to think. Don't have to talk. And reach the far end of idiot maniac traveling no wiser than when you began. That's an excuse. Sit down. <laughs> right there. Ask me something, won't I? Ask me about... Minorities. Minorities? Glad you asked. Minorities. Oh my God. 
the dear minorities. Ben Franklin may have started the Continental Fire Department, but the black, brown, yellow, Mormon, Catholic, Swedish, Irish minorities permanently destroyed and forever changed its function. Yes, Montag? Yes, good. Well, once we were a minority of one, eh? Small country, few hundred years back, but then we grew and changed color and put on our hats for one religion and fell on our knees for another. Yes, right, Mrs. Montag? Oh, uh, right. And by the millions, they poured in upon us. Minorities upon minorities. And finally, you have 300 million cat lovers, dog lovers, doctors, lawyers, Baptists, Unitarians, second and third generation heathen Chinese, blockhead Swedes, mafia mean Italianos, beer fat Germans, <laughs> sour spit Texans, drunken Irishmen, all the minor, <coughs> minor minorities with their navels to be kept clean. Blacks don't like a little black sample. Burn it. White people hate Uncle Tom's Cabin. Burn it. The Jews hate Fagin in Oliver Twist. Burn Fagin. The Irish think Sean O'Casey is out to get them. Burn O'Casey. The Russians hate the Wall Street Journal. Where's my match? The Republicans detest the Communist Manifest Manifesto. Light the fire. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Women's lib hates that. Old-fashioned female, old-fashioned ways into the furnace. Krauss, remembrance of things past. Too much homosexuality. Burn! Death in Venice, Thomas Mann. Not enough! Uh, burn. <laughs> <laughs> More comic books. More sex, more non books, more <laughs> gossip. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Plenty of facts, but no meaning. And there you have it, Montag. No governmental regulation, no dictums, no true censorship. Minorities, minorities, minorities. Did it all with a push here and a shove there, and everywhere an open store, stove, and a ready fire. <coughs> More trade journals? Of course. Iron facts are safe. TV news? Of course. As long as each item isn't much longer than a minute. Wait, 40 seconds. No, no, 30. What the hell? 10 seconds flat. <laughs> Flick the magic cards. Do the trick. Get on. Give us a nation of runners, jumpers, rackers, tinkers, grabbers, snatchers, flyers, swimmers. Instead of examiners, critics, knowers, and imaginative creators. Intellectual? That's a swear word. That boy or girl in your class who knows everything. The bright idea infested know-it-all. The smart SOB who makes you look bad. Burn up. Well, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Shun them is better. Damn bright know-it-alls. Mm -hmm. Let them die on the vine. <laughs> Who knows? They might have a real book hidden away. Get rid of them. Let's have a nation where everyone is not only born equal, but damn well crushed down and made equal. Right? <laughs> right! And now that most homes are fireproofed, who better to see to it than you, Montag, and me? Fahrenheit 451 Incorporated, the conscience of the world. Lectures over. I don't think. Bullseye. <laughs> you don't think. <laughs> Time to go, Montag. Peace. Give the people more contests they can win by remembering the words of popular songs <coughs> or state capitals or how much corn Iowa grew last year. Cram them full of non-combustible facts. Chalk them so full of data they feel stuffed, feel absolutely brilliant with information. Then they'll feel like they are thinking. They'll have a sense of motion without moving. And they'll be happy because facts of that sort don't change. They just sit there, eh? To hell with philosophy. That's depressing. Bring on your acrobats, magicians, daredevils, jet cars, motorcycles, sex, and drugs. 
On your feet, Mrs. Montauk, quickly. Come to the side of the sofa. Put your hand down behind this pillow. Further. Yes. Feel something? There. Hold it. <coughs> Whatever it is hidden there. Well, Montauk, feeling better, feeling well. You're better. You're well. Come along. Full day at the station. Things to show you. Stop by my house later. Things to show you. You will be home late. Out you go. <laughs> you know the happiness, boys. The Dixie duo, eh? Feeling superb? Superb. <laughs> Can you count to five? Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs>